Adobe is finally listening to us. For the most part, they're currently working on a brand new tool called the Object Mask Tool. Kind of like the tool in Photoshop, but then for video editing. This is life changing, so I'll show you everything about it. Let's open up Premiere Pro Beta. Alright, now let's say I want to mask out this person and automatically track it. That way, I can add text behind her, apply some effects and a lot more. Alright, so make sure the clip is selected and go to the toolbar. In here, you'll see the Object Mask Tool. Head over to the program monitor. In here, hover your cursor over the subject and as you can see, it will get highlighted in red. Now left click. It will take a few seconds, but once it's done, you'll have a perfect selection. Now in the effect controls, you'll see a new property called unassigned mask. And here you can see the mask from the selection we just created and all the tracking buttons in here. I just want to clarify, this is not the same as the old mask tracking feature we had in Premiere. The object mask tool is a lot better. Now to track your mask simply click on track selected masks forward and backwards and as you can see Premiere is now tracking the subject. It doesn't matter where your playhead is because once it's done tracking it will reverse itself and track everything backwards so your mask is tracked over the entire clip. All the keyframes or in other words tracking data will be right here in the tracker. This works faster than the Rotobrush tool in After Effects and I'll prove that to you at the end of this video. Now you probably wonder why you can still see the background of the subject even though we already masked it. That's because the mask we created is actually unassigned. It isn't really applied to anything. If you want to get rid of the background simply right click the object mask and choose change to opacity mask. That will apply to the opacity property and as you can see background gone. You'll have all the standard mask controls right here. Now you can also change it back to unassigned mask by right clicking the mask again and then choose Choosing change to unassigned mask. We're doing this because you can do a lot more than just remove the background. Let's say I want to make the background blurry. Then find the Gaussian blur effect in the effect browser and drag it into the effect controls. As you can see, the mask will be assigned to the blur effect. This allows me to add blur only to the inside of the mask. Or if I invert the mask, it will only be applied to the outside. Let me decrease it again to around 38. And as you can see, the background now has a natural blur applied to it. And it plays back perfectly fine. Try that with a linked composition. Next I'm going to show you what these buttons are for and how to add text behind your subject. But first I want to tell you more about a plugin in Premiere Pro. This is Storyblocks, the sponsor of today's video. I can simply search for the b-roll I need, click the download button and boom it will appear in your project panel. No need to leave Premiere. Unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Storyblocks has everything you need in one place. 4K and HD video, templates, music and sound effects. It's like an unlimited pool of media that gives you freedom to test, experiment and create more effective videos. I use it all the time to test new effects for tutorials or simply to enhance the story I'm telling you guys. You can choose between a monthly or annual plan, no hidden costs or extra fees. Now this is important to understand, the stock library is constantly being refreshed with brand new content that feels authentic and is created by real artists, not by an AI. Thank you Storyblocks so much for sending me this shirt by the way. I love it. Anything you download is 100% royalty free, pre-licensed and ready to use. No need to worry about legal rights or copyright claims. Now to get three extra months for free when you sign up for an annual plan, go to storyblocks.com slash Premiere Basics or just click the link down below. Alright, now what are all these buttons doing here? Well, as you can see when I hover my cursor over the subject, it will kind of guess what I'm trying to mask. But if I click and drag, I can kind of draw a box around there to tell Premiere I want to mask out something in this box. This works perfectly fine too. Alright, now what if I want to select more than just this person? These little leaves for example. Well, you can actually draw another section in your video even if there's one already. Now you can also remove it again. And to do that, simply hold down Alt and select the part you want to remove. It's that simple. Now from this drop down menu you can actually choose the lasso tool. This is a second way you can make selections. With this tool you can draw a shape around the subject which makes it even easier for Premiere to understand what you're trying to mask. Lastly you can also change the color of the mask highlight if you'd like to from the menu right here. Alright now let's put some text behind it. Right so I added this text layer right here. Now to put it behind her all you gotta do is 
is duplicate your video on top of the text. Now your text will disappear again. Next, what we're gonna do is make sure the top clip is selected. Then grab the object mask tool and head over to the program monitor. Just as you learned before, make a selection, head over to the effect controls and click the track forward and backwards button. When it's done, right click the object mask and choose change to opacity mask. And now, as you can see, the text is behind her. Now, let's see how long it takes to rotoscope the same video in After Effects. So, first of all, to create a selection, you gotta spend some time in here. First, I need to grab the Rotobrush tool and make a selection. As you can see, this is already a lot harder than in Premiere. It takes more time. But once we're done, I simply press the spacebar and let After Effects do its thing. Now, obviously, this is sped up, but this took me 8 minutes in total. In Premiere, this is only about 30 seconds. And we're not even done. We still have to freeze frame and wait another 8 minutes. And now, after 60 minutes, I can start adding text animations, color changes, whatever I want to do. So with After Effects, you can easily spend half an hour creating something simple like this. So conclusion, rotoscoping is for more detailed and advanced VFX. That's why it's slower. So luckily we don't have to use that anymore for adding basic stuff like text in the background. Adobe, thank you so much. I can't wait until it's out of beta. Now, if you want to learn more about this update, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.